Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I have a Philips Sonic Air model number HX9340, and it was given to me by a relative of mine. He said that uh, in the past the battery would last about four weeks and now it's down to seven days to ten days so he purchased uh, a new battery and I'm going to replace it in this video this is the battery if anyone is interested it's size 14500 and it's Seven hundred and forty milliamp hour. Okay, to keep the, the video from becoming an hour long, I'm gonna open the uh, the toothbrush, remove the casing, and remove the motherboard. Um, and but I'll leave some links in the description to some very good uh, channels that that will help you with. Uh, with all that with the opening process uh, there's a great channel called next let's fix it uh, garage and it has a wealth of information on sonic air toothbrushes if you're interested in, in doing any kind of uh, maintenance or repairs you should check it out like i said i'll leave a link in the uh, description so here we have the toothbrush the board is here, this side, and on the other side, there's the battery. So we're going to remove these two rubber, one on this side, one on the other side. There we go. Now the battery is uh, soldered on the board. And there are three points that needs, need to be disordered. Desoldered. There's first this point here. This point here is like a switch. It disconnects the battery from the rest of the board. And then there are the battery terminals. One is here. I'll show you all this under the microscope, but for a big, bigger view, one is here and the other one is here. Okay, let me go under the microscope and we'll take a look at this. Let me raise the microscope a bit. There we go. So the fourth the first point I mentioned is here. It's JP1 jumper one. There are two pads, and when you remove the, sol the, the solder here, you disconnect the battery from the board. And then this here is one terminal of the battery, and the other one is I'm going to shift it, shift the, the toothbrush left. The other one is right here, right next to this fuse, the F1 fuse. So the first step is to desolder this jumper and then this point and this point so we can remove the battery and then replace it with the new one. I also recently uh, uh, acquired uh, an internal battery resistance so I'm going to run it through uh, that and, and compare the old battery to the new one. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, desoldering this jumper. 
Okay, so I'm going to use a bit of uh, solder wick to clear that uh, jumper. Let me put some flux on it. There we go. I think that's a bit too much, but that's okay. And I'm going to put my soldering iron to 330 degrees Celsius. Okay. Yeah, I think this is ready. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's remove this blob here. There we go, that did it. Let me do a quick clean up while the board is still hot. Okay, so in the next step, I'm going to use the, uh, the soldering pump, so I can't do that under the microscope. I don't have enough clearance. So I'll switch to the other camera. I'm going to start by adding a bit of uh, fresh leaded solder on both terminals. That's one. That's the other one. Okay, that's looking good. Let me show you under the microscope. Bring the microscope in. So this here is the jumper that we cleared. This is one pin of the battery. And where's the other one? And here's the other end. And then just see if they are uh, loose enough. I think that's loose enough. Let me check the other one. Yeah, this one is definitely loose. I'm going to just try and loosen this one a bit more. Yeah, I think that's loose. So now, hopefully, I can remove the battery. Okay, let's see here. There we go. So, there we go.
And this one, let's see what it reads. This is so new. Not much information on there. Okay. Now I'm going to use my internal resistance meter and compare the old one to the new one. Okay, so I have here the Fenir C HRM10 and let's measure the internal resistance of the old battery first. It's measuring 83.7 milliohms. Wait, I need to capture this screen. Okay, 84.3. Let me capture it. Okay. And then let's measure the other one. 84.4. And the new battery. is 60. So I would say that's a, a reasonable difference. I think the 20 milliohm makes a difference here. Okay, let's proceed with uh, installing the new battery. I'm gonna put the uh, battery back in. The negative side goes on the bottom where the charging coil is. So here we go. Just trying to get the pins to go through the hole. Okay, one side is good. This is the other side. There we go. Okay, so the battery is fully seated now. Um, you can see the, uh, the two terminals. This is the negative pin, and this is the positive pin. Now I'm just going to solder, solder them in, and followed by closing the initial jumper that uh, here, the initial jumper that I desoldered. I'm going to just put a, a blob to reconnect the two the two points. Okay, here we go. Turn on my soldering iron. That's pin one, positive end. Now I'm going to do the negative end. show you under the microscope once I bridge the, uh, the jumper. Okay. So right now if I press, if I press the, uh, the on button, nothing will happen. Yeah, I just pressed it, nothing is happening. Okay, let me bridge the... Uh, actually, let me cut the, the, the leads. So 
crazy. And the other one. Okay, now I'm gonna set the jumper. And I think that did it. Yeah, looks good. Let me show you under the microscope. There we go. So this is the uh, jumper and this is the negative terminal and the positive terminal is right here. Let me do a quick uh, clean up. Where's my toothbrush? There, there it is. Okay, let's give it a quick test before we insert it into the, uh, the casing. Yeah, we're good. And there we go. These are the LEDs. Okay. I'm going to put it back in the, into the uh, case and then we'll, we'll do a final uh, test. Okay, here we go. Fully assembled. Final test. And there we go, brand new battery. Hopefully that'll last him another four or five years easily. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. And see you on the next one. Bye bye. Thank you.